the recommended intake for potassium is like 4,700 milligrams. I was taking 10,000 for years. See? So as far as insulin, when uh, when we we uh, uh, glucose, when we take in glucose or even protein, mm -hmm. you know, a lysine, a leucine, for example, it's uh, insulogenic. Uh, right. it's, it increases blood sugar. So yeah. the pancreatic beta cells will stimulate insulin production, and that's yeah. going to get stored alongside electrolytes, uh, minerals, right. uh, other, other nutrients. I mean, exactly. people always think that insulin only stores carbohydrates, but it's not the case. No, it's it stores everything. nutrients. It's everything. Exactly. And electrolytes, everything. Yeah. If you're right. in a hyperkalemic state, when bodybuilders are posed, like a lot of time after show, mm -hmm. uh, insulin will store that excessive potassium and potassium, save them yeah. from hyperkalemia. But That's anyway, why when you combine telmosartan with nabivalol, you get into a hyperkalemic state. Insulin is actually a good addition on top of that. So exactly. I think I was one of the first one that brought that to the fitness industry. Yeah, telmosartan is great, already causes hyperkalemia in certain states. And then you add that with the bivalol, which you can also induce hyperkalemia. And now you have two together. Your potassium levels will be quite high unless you take a little bit of insulin to shuttle that away. You know, I love that you mentioned just, this because yeah. even even more recently, actually, it was yesterday or the day before, mm -hmm. uh, Anthony made a video regarding why why aren't you taking an ARP, for example? Everybody mm -hmm. should be on an ARP, and within the fitness industry. Uh, people are discussing things that are mandatory. Everybody should mm. get a Zeta vibe, everybody on an ARP, anybody on beta blockers, anybody on this, on that. So people are, influencers are now making statements that are universal for everybody, which is yeah. absolutely mm. bullshit. And when you look at, and this is something that I don't want to, you know, start a conspiracy theory or whatever, but that's just my observation. Big Pharma. Big Pharma is behind it. Right, right, right. But when you look <laughs> at when you look at the rate of side effects, potential side effects, even like hyper, uh, hyperkalemia, for example, or even angioedema or whatever from uh, from ARPs, mm. they're so low. They're in the below one per percentile. I right. see mm. that in real life. I know at least four or five people that have experienced that. I've had so, it. Yeah, I've had it. Yeah. So, like, is it really zero point two percent? So, People... so this, again, this is the discrepancy with, between the data and the, the practical application. When bodybuilders start taking ARBs, many of the bodybuilders, like real bodybuilders, like hardcore guys, they mm. supplement with potassium or they eat potassium-rich foods. So now you're more at risk to develop hyperkalemia. And then, again, you combine it with the bivalol, which also has like you know very small percentile of instances where hyperkalemia can occur. Now you double or triple or 10x the risk. So, you know, and then we go through these cyclical diets where sometimes when you're metabolizing the glycogen from your skeletal muscle, what is going to happen? You're going to dump the potassium from the skeletal muscle into the bloodstream. Exactly. More risk for hyperkalemia. And this goes for everything. People neglect yeah. the fact that in the studies, they're taking 60-year-old people, 30 or whatever, that have mm -hmm. a body mass index of slightly larger than a female they're not mm -hmm. taking bigger steve or big no. remy as the standard no like we're a different we're, we're from a different planet if we look so, the, uh, the, so, so the, the, the the recommended intake for potassium is like 4700 milligrams i was taking 10,000 for years see, see? 10,000 and many bodybuilders you just go through the diet i mean i'm i'm one of the few coaches who actually wrote down all of the amino acids and all of the micronutrients, mm -hmm. the vitamins, the minerals, the trace minerals, etc. I wrote that all down so I could keep track of the mineral intake and, and all the other micronutrients. Right. And most bodybuilders would get from a, a, a generic bro diet already 5,000 to 7,000 milligrams of potassium. That's with vegetables, some sweet potato, um, you know, some of the protein sources are actually quite rich in potassium. So people don't think about that. So, yeah, I eat healthy. I don't add salt to my diet but mm -hmm. you know there's so much potassium in your food dude exactly so there's, so it is we are more at risk for this to develop so i, I mentioned this over a year ago in one of the biobros episodes and now people are slowly catching on um you know so but but still if you're you're less at risk probably if you have a diet with a decent amount of carbohydrates that are 
more devoid of potassium, so rice, for example, cream of rice, mm -hmm. oatmeal, those have a lot less potassium than uh, potatoes, sweet potatoes, or some of the vegetables that we generally eat. And if you can control that, you know, with insulin, shuttle all those carbohydrates into skeletal muscle and take the potassium out of the bloodstream that way, then you're less at risk. Still, if you deplete for a week and you keep your potassium intake high and all of the potassium is now leaking from your skeletal muscle because you're metabolizing the glycogen, yeah, your potassium levels go up again, you know? So you have to look into um, a multitude of different vectors and again, do your blood work frequently because, you know, at home electrolyte testing is not available as far as I know. And also intracellular, you can't know re really what's going on. No, right, yeah. yeah. And the, th yeah. the thing is, potassium drives, it's it's one of the the transporters for glucose to go into, to, to convert to glycogen alongside yeah. mm -hmm. water. And also right. you need adequate amount of sodium because water is right. low sodium as Trans well. Yeah, right, exactly. So that, that's that's a very important. So, and, and we're talking about bigger bodies that sweat more, that take yeah. androgens, that directly impact the raw system, positively mm -hmm. or, neg or negatively, mostly negatively. So all of, all of those factors are completely different than the people that we read in those in the in the, in the scientific <laughs> literature. It's yeah. completely different. It's almost yeah. as if we're looking at my studies yeah. because we're completely different species. Right. So so that ticks me off when I I talk to somebody that's a biohacker and they just spam me with the same you know generic studies that have zero correlation with the mm. with the audience that are watching them. It's safe. That, 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 People feel safe with these studies. They don't want to think further I than. Think they they make it out to be as a scapegoat for for justifying being a pharmaceutical junk. I think that's yeah. it. Mm. I think that's it. It started yeah. off with taking 30 different supplements mm. when we were younger. We had no idea. We thought protein, creatine, BCAs, aminos, this and that. You have like the whole <laughs> yeah. fucking stack, right? I mean? yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now yeah. it's the same principle, same approach. But with PEDs. Yeah. And now with health and longevity, it's the same mm -hmm. shit, but on a different spectrum. Because yeah, I think I, thinking I, I think I think and, and maybe I'm a little bit guilty of this as well. I think the audience is getting more scared of their health. So they, they want to do preventative stuff when in reality it's not always required. So I'm on Domasartan and Nabivalol. I'm 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 using those to prevent further negative heart remodeling. Um, mm -hmm. I take the azetamide because my LDL will go, you know, horribly wrong. And mm -hmm. even though my calcium score is zero, which is great, I'm trying mm -hmm. to keep it that way, right? The azetamide I will take out when I'm on TRT. I will take out when I'm off cycle because I don't need it. I don't. I take the tomosartan out as well. I don't need it. I don't need blood pressure management or reduction of uh, you know the RAS system because I don't do anything severe that could offset it. Because I mean, again, I'm drug free or on TRT, I definitely don't need it. I will keep the nubivalol in because I like for productivity purposes, a reduced mm -hmm. heart rate, it helps to keep me focused. Right? So that's my, um, my productivity enhancing drug. Right? I, I feel more leveled this way. Right. Now, and I so I, I add in ancillaries as needed and I do the same thing with my clients Mm -hmm. You start somewhere, you see how the body responds, and then you add in an ancillary depending on how the body responds and if that's provable with blood work, step by step. So some guys might start off with 20 milligrams stomosartan. I had a guy do an ACG protocol, and his blood pressure went up. 20 milligrams stomosartan, not 80. Right. Not 80 milligrams stomosartan, right. 20. I reduced right. his potassium intake slightly by changing his food sources, and I was... Blood pressure is sustained. Then I took him off the Telmasartan when we changed some of the protocol. So it's just a step-by-step -step thing. But I like usually when I make these videos about preventative measures, I'm, I'm speaking in the context of hardcore bodybuilding, which is sometimes a mistake, of course, because most of the audience are not hardcore bodybuilders. Yeah. Um, and I would say, you know, these are the ancillaries you can look into, but only add them in as needed. Um, exactly. But most guys don't need that stuff, you know? Fully agree with and again, you. Yeah, and, and and a lot of these drugs they also have negative side effects, like we just discussed the, the hyper uh, you know kalemia issues um, that you need to consider. But it's this is the problem with YouTube. People have 
a very limited uh, attention span. And I would love to make a two hour video just to, discussing the bivolo and um, all of the scientific literature and how we could extrapolate that into bodybuilding practices. Nobody would watch it. That's true. That's true. Uh, and, um, and again, I think the reason why things have shifted into this endeavor is because the other style of content contact uh, has been milked. So mm. it used to be fake netis. Then yeah. it was like all hardcore drug body. Boston Lloyd started this. Yeah. And mm. then and then slowly it's HRT. And now it's like harm mitigation, this and that. Yeah. Mm. But the same people are taking the same approach, which is taking it to extremes. Because extreme people have the same the same thought process, the same habits, mm -hmm. and the same way that they approach it, and it's yeah. the same problem. It's the it's exact like same problem. Extreme anti-aging. I mean, we see it with some of these podcasts as well. You know, these guys take it to the next level, and they don't look anti-aged or or healthy at all. Well, you know, dude, 